Welcome to episode two of Storytime. Today I will share what I refer to as my biggest heartbreak. It is somewhere along the lines of also the most embarrassing thing, but if you've watched my most embarrassing video, that really is at the top. So this is close to the same theme of embarrassing, but with a stronger theme of my first and only real like heartbreak. This is my opinion about heartbreak. The more intense your heartbreak is in a relationship, I feel like the more unhealthy. Overall, generally, it's just, you know, probably wasn't a really good relationship and that is why it is so much harder when it's over. Let me explain a little bit more. So, I've had probably five or six relationships in my life, serious relationships, and I've had relationships end, but I haven't necessarily looked back on them and think about like this epic heartbreak that I experienced. For example, in my later years of relationships, I can look back mostly and think, you know, that these were two people that cared about each other very deeply or loved each other, but weren't right for each other and therefore it didn't work out and they respectfully parted ways at some point. And though it was hard and it was painful, um, it wasn't necessarily heartbreaking. Okay, see where I'm going with this? Okay. So my most intense heartbreak came from one of my shorter relationships in my life. It was actually, the actual healthy portion of that relationship was quite brief. And the heart-wrenching, dramatic undoing of the relationship was like, took much longer. And this is the one experience where I felt I acted most irrationally, which I do feel like when, when artists and poets write about love, it's always just like so intense and you act irrationally that you cannot make reason out of anything and you know, it makes no sense. And when you're experiencing the heartbreak of that, it's just insurmountable pain and suffering and your, your life is just so you, it cannot, it's just a struggle to get through the day. And I would feel with this relationship as it was, it was ending, it was somewhat like that. It was my undoing. I became the most lowest version of myself. <laughs> I kind of learned over time that the healthier, like I said previously, you are mentally with yourself, the better you're going to be in a relationship with someone else. So needless to say, I was not in a good place at this time. And looking back now, hindsight's 2020, we can all see, oh yes, that, you know, was a pretty big mistake, regret. And I hate to have regrets because you obviously learn from them, become a better person. But you know, this is definitely falls along the lines of one of the most embarrassing times of my life too. Looking back, it's very cringeworthy. I think about that time in my life and I'm just like, oh, so embarrassing. But you gotta like have those awkward growing moments in order to become the beautiful butterfly <laughs> later in life. So much later. <sighs> Some key ingredients to a real good heartbreak. One of them being that you get involved with someone when you're completely not ready to be involved with another person. And codependence is a good, you know, ingredient to throw in there. Insecurity, low self-esteem, um, like just, those are all ways to really like overly invest in a relationship and put way too many eggs in that basket. So then when it doesn't work out, your whole world just absolutely crumbles aka you experience your heartbreak. Being younger helps with that because the less times you've had to deal with, you know, unrequited love or, you know, an unsuccessful relationship, the more painful it is. But when you've, you know, had a few under your belt, it's not, not as big a deal. So this was one of my earlier relationships. And yeah, uh, so this is another <laughs> Thing that I learned was the red flags. Looking back, I can see all the mistakes I made. Um, I can tell you right off of the bat that this person 
was not really wanting to be in a relationship, definitely not a committed relationship, and definitely threw out all kinds of like notices and flags for me to pick up along the way. But because I was so desperate for love, I just, you know, tunnel visioned all the way through making up excuses for them or myself and, you know, reasons why it will work out. So definitely was in a terrible place in my life um, financially, uh, with work, um, personally, just everything was in the shitter. So definitely was putting all of it, all my happiness and potential success in life on this relationship and this other person. So that was a good idea. For me, looking back, this heartbreak led to completely irrational, erratic behavior, things of the obsessive nature. Um, needless to say, we had a very short, intense relationship where I completely overcommitted way too early and um, then felt somewhat trapped, you know, it is, I think it's called the, there's a fallacy for this in, in, in philosophy and stuff where you just like overcommit to, to an idea and then now it's too late to kind of back out of it because you've already put in all this time and energy. So there I was doing that and relationship was not good. Um, you know, there was deceit, there was, you know, unkindness things were not pleasant but did I want to leave no I wanted to hang on it made me dig my claws in even deeper because in that time in my life I just felt like I didn't deserve anything better than that and that's the best that I could do so I hung on and so the actual relationship itself I think was like <sighs> It was like a six to eight month of actual dating, but the entire time was I was being consistently proposed by this person that they wanted to kind of branch out and see other people and I wanted to have that freedom. And I was like, no, nah, no. Nah. So that was great. That was a good decision on my part. And so eventually, it really came to a head. There was blatant cheating that occurred. And let me tell you, if you start a relationship so intensely and dramatically and passionately and with, you know, drama and issues and, you know, late nights and, and, and you know, checking people's phones and, and, and just crying and whatever else, it's not gonna get any more mellow and more solid and, and better. It's just gonna, it's, you're on this like very rocky, thin, thin ice and it's just, this ice is just getting thinner. It's getting thinner until all of a sudden, one weekend, it absolutely implodes. And you wonder how this happened and you look around being like, but you know, I really thought that, that this was really gonna make it and it was gonna get better, but it did not. This is how sad of a state I was in at the time is that when this person who had definitely cheated a few times prior but not necessarily been absolutely caught and never would confess to it, eventually 100% cheated because when I was out one night, the person that they cheated on me with told me in front of a group of people in the bathroom. Just yelled it across the bathroom stalls, was just like, yep. Yeah, uh, your, your partner cheated on you with me, you suck, peace out. And it was absolutely horrifying, horrible. I went, Ooh, I like ran out of the place crying, you know, and just felt so betrayed and so hurt and so low and so, you know, just worthless. And then, you know, you just start putting the pieces together. So when finally the last incident occurred that finally drove this relationship to end in meaning that I moved out and I lived on my own, um, 
and actually accepted the ending of this relationship, realizing there was no coming back. There was no, there's nothing, there's no foundation to which to return to, to recover from any of the other things that have been going on. And that it really was over that this person really didn't want to be with me. And I had to accept that. Um, what, what really helped me, and this is for anybody that's been cheated on or lied to or anything like that in a relationship. I felt like it ended not on my terms because I didn't get to, to, it wasn't mutual. I felt at the time because I had been cheated on and then, you know, that was the reason it didn't work, didn't work out. Um, and so I felt like I had all this stuff I wanted to say. I didn't have closure. I didn't have any, my side of the, you know, their, their, their side had been sh shut down, closed, locked, turned off. They were moving on. And I just felt like my, my feelings were still just like out there, just, it was a mess. What I did was I actually started writing in a journal at that time, which I've continued to do since then, because I knew that the feelings and the emotions and the thoughts and the anger and anything else that I had, the confusion, the heartbreak, the sadness, all of that was on me to figure out. It wasn't on this person. This person never wanted to figure out in the first place and they definitely didn't want to help me figure it out after the fact. So I started writing, actually began writing in my journal to that person just to get my feelings out. And then as I started reading what I was writing, I was like, they didn't want to be with you. They didn't really care. And they're not going to care. And why would you want to be with someone so badly that doesn't want to be with you? But it, it is a hard thing to accept. Trust me, I understand when you're in a, in a relationship like that. It's really hard to accept because you don't think you deserve anything better. You're not going to get anything better and that's it for you. And so it's scary and stuff like that. But trust me, you will. You just have to honestly work on yourself as cheesy as that sounds. It is true. I didn't want to hear it from all my friends and family at that time that they were trying to be supportive and tell me this wasn't a good relationship for me and I needed to like get out of it and move on. Um, eventually they just all had to put up their hands and just wait for me to come to that realization, which was painfully long, painfully long. I wandered through the streets. I was sad. I sat alone at the beach. I wrote in my journal. I just moped and moped and moped for like way too long. But eventually I did come to realize that this was a good thing and that I would find someone else when it was the right time, when I was ready. And I did eventually. The reason I'm just sharing this is because I do feel like we've all had those relationships. Um, I don't know if you're lucky you haven't and you've always thought really highly of yourself and you had good esteem and you, you know, didn't settle for people that maybe didn't treat you the best, but that's not all of us. And I don't blame this other person either because they clearly from the beginning were trying to tell me that this isn't what they wanted, but they didn't want to like directly say it because it didn't want to hurt my feelings and be harsh. And I just wouldn't pick up any sing signals. I just refused to listen to every single sign that was put in front of me until it got to a place that it just like blew up. So what I've learned from this experience going forward, and this was years and years ago now, but what I learned from it is definitely to become less reactive to other people, specifically other partners, because a long time ago, I used to believe that love and a relationship is what makes you happy but this the reality is and I'm sure you've heard this before it, you have to be happy on your own you at least have to be in a healthy place before you meet the right person or it's not going to work because you're just putting so much weight and energy into that person and that person's just a person and they have problems and flaws and struggles and they're going to have bad days and they're they're, they're just not going to be they cannot be the cure-all for all your issues. So if you're going through this right now, just try and take a step back. Think about on your day to day with the, with the person you're with. Are you happy? Are you happy most of the time? You should be happy most of the time. And if you're unhappy, is it because of that other person or is it because of stuff that's going on with you? If it's stuff going on with you, then you need to work on that yourself. But if the other person is making you unhappy, then maybe that's just not the relationship that you should be in. 
But honestly, we all have to figure this out on our own. Like, I'm 35. I've been in enough relationships now. And, you know, I don't know what the answer is, really. Some people meet the right person. Boom, they're with them for the rest of their lives. Me, took a little while. But there's hope. So I hope that this video can help you. I hope it makes you feel less alone if you acted out of sorts at some stage of your life. Um, please comment below if you can relate to that. Um, I mean, I did absolutely ridiculous stuff. I was like going on social media, I was looking at where they were, da 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 and it's because, you know, I wasn't being told the truth and, and I was going way overboard and trying to be like the perfect person and like the perfect partner and cooking dinners and being very accommodating and like basically becoming an absolute, like a, a doormat. And it's just not a good look. So don't do that. You don't need to do that. You do not need to do that. Okay. Thank you so much for listening to this delightful story time about my most horrific heartache. Thankfully, years have passed and I've learned much better ways of um, communicating in relationships and also just, you know, not being in ones that aren't good. So yeah. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, check out my other story time stories my most embarrassing story of all time was episode number one subscribe if you want to see future episodes because story time is just gonna keep on coming we got so many stories in here it's it's you know i'm unstoppable with the story time also throw down a comment if there's a like a, a theme or topic that you would like me to touch on because trust me i got it all okay have a great day bye